Well, 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 I'm about to start talking on my live. A couple more more join. Hello, welcome. Oh, we're up to eight. We're up to nine. Uh, and then I'm going to give a, I'm going to answer some questions and I'm going to talk a little about what's going on with me. I'll answer your questions. I'll answer my questions. And then I will, um, what are your LA dates? Hadley Bass, you can find out. I'll be in, I'll be performing in LA, uh, December 10th and 11th. For tickets, you can go to michaeljammon.com slash live. They're now on, they're, they're on sale. And that event I expect to sell out very fast because I'm only doing two shows. Last time I did six and those sold out fast. So it's only two. So if you do want to come to the LA show, I know it's a little early because that's November. I'm sorry, that's that show is in December and it's now, you know, October. But it will sell out. I haven't really started promoting it too much. Do you ever wish you could rewrite an episode of a series to make it better? No, absolutely not. Not, not unless they're wanting to pay me. Coming to Florida? Rick, a lot of people want me to come to Florida. I don't know which city you are. Rick, I'd love to get there, as well as Seattle. Hello, Joel. Uh, just DM me here on Instagram your email address and what city you are closest to in Florida. And that way, when I get there for the book tour, I'll send you a note. I'll drop you a line. How do you sell a feature screenplay? Oh, you're new to my channel. Welcome, welcome. You're new to my channel. I got a lot to tell you. You got a lot to watch. Start watching my videos. Listen to my podcast. There's no easy answer. Uh, listen to my podcast. Get onto my free newsletter, which is michaeljammon.com slash watchlist. Different essays from previous shows. Jay Hunt, did you come to the LA show? Tampa, Florida? Yeah, so Tampa, just DM me your email address. Uh, yeah, I'm doing... I'm doing uh, December in L.A. I'm doing two new stories. Yeah. I consider the L.A. is like the workshop. And so when I go, when I travel with it, those are the, um, they have less of a choice. In L.A., because I can perform so easily, uh, I, I try out new stuff. Sebastian, Florida. I never heard of Sebastian, Florida, Rick. But if you want to DM me uh, your email address, I'll let you know. Purchase mine super. Oh, Petrina draws. Purchase mine super early for December. All shows in the past sold out. Petrina draws is absolutely right. The last six sold out, and uh, and I know some people were disappointed. And I was like, yeah, I, I, that's why I'm doing more shows. But but like, get your tickets, you know, as soon as you can. Ever been to England? I haven't. I'd love to be there. Do you have any advice for a young lit manager trying to break their clients into TV? Um, you're a. Are you talking about literature manager? Uh, you know, they're going to they're need to kind of write. They're going to have to write spec scripts. They're going to have to write TV scripts. Yeah, I mean, I have plenty of advice. I would treat them. I would treat those literary writers the same way. I would, this my advice is the same to them as anybody else. So have them follow my page. Have them get on my free newsletter. That's michaeljammon.com slash watch this. Listen to my podcast. It's all free. So that's what I would have them do. Just send them my way. But like, you're asking me, do I have any advice? How about all of my advice? Okay. Where in Boston? Amesbury. You know where Amesbury is. It's just north of the city, probably about 45 minutes near, near Newburyport. You know where that is, Charlie. Get in your car. You got a car. Get in your car and drive up to uh, Amesbury. Greatest show idea that never came to be. I don't know. I did. Can your tips be used in other mediums like comics? Well, yes. I mean, storytelling is storytelling. Right, a comic just tells a story. They just draw it. What difference does it make? But yeah, absolutely. Best place to get coverage in your opinion? Nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. Don't get me. You want to righteous warriors get me riled up. So you're going to pay a website. You know some schmuck. You're going to pay them $100 or whatever it is. And that someone's going to read your script and give notes. And it's going to be some schmuck making minimum wage who has never worked in the business telling you what your script should be. Why? If you can find someone like me or like, or like a retired writer, someone like who has a lot of experience, pay them separately, right? Get independent, pay them, but don't pay a service. How, what are you talking about? You're getting me all wild up. You will, get, you will have notes from someone who has no freaking idea what they're talking about and you're paying for that. Oh. So you may think, well, it's only $25. It's, it's $25 versus let's say $500. Well, $25 doesn't seem like a lot, except you're throwing it out the window. You're, still, you're lighting it on fire. Excited about Frasier? Not particularly, unless they decide to hire me. Are you the best comic writer in Hollywood? 
I don't think so. Hey, Michael, do you have any idea of what a PA roughly makes per hour? Actually, I don't. I really don't. I should. I could find out, but I don't know. Uh, what are your favorite shows you weren't being a part of? Oh, I don't. That's a long discussion. What is the greatest show idea? I don't know. Do you ever read scripts anymore for Friends? Maybe. Uh, no, uh, I really don't. I mean, I, I mean, occasionally, yes. I read one for a friend, uh, Phil. Uh, few months ago. That's a big ask, you understand. It's a big favor. You know, it takes a couple hours to read scripts, drop notes, talk to them about it. So it's like saying, it, it, like, imagine if I was a dentist and you say, hey, have you ever drilled into someone's teeth as a, as a favor? No, no, I never once. They have to make an appointment. And they got to they gotta pay me. <laughs> That's how that works. How much editing is done to the screenplay after an actor is brought on? Our lines and dialogue change to cater to their looks and mannerisms. Not so much to their look. Well, not really looks, but definitely to their abilities. If, if we cast a role and we get a big writer or a big actor attached, then, yeah, we'll do a rewrite to cater towards what they do, knowing that, you know, what their strengths and weaknesses are. So, yes, that, that happens quite a bit. When are you coming to Connecticut or New York? I'm right on the border. Oh, I'd love to. I mean, yeah, I mean, I... I, I the problem is if I come to New York, it'll be probably New York City. And I will get to New York because I'm from New York. And my mom lives and my, both my parents live in Connecticut. But they're they're actually making the drive to Boston to see this show because uh, I don't know when I'll – that'll be when the book tour is. And I, I don't have plans yet. But but what is your name? Uh, Josane. Did I say your name right? Uh, if you want to DM me your email address, I'll keep you posted. Uh, just write down what city you're closest to. You're going to say Stanford or something. I don't know. Right on the border? You're going to say Greenwich, aren't you? What advice do you have for a writer who's over 40 with no experience? Gina? Gina Dunlop. What advice? All of my advice. I've made talks on this page where I'm exactly answering that question. Go watch it. Get on my – if you want me to email to you for free, sign up to michaeljammon.com slash watch list. Listen to my podcast. It's all free, Gina. I have a lot of advice. I have a lot of advice. The question is do you want it? Most people don't really want it. They just like, give me, give me the 10-second version. Well – I, I'm going to give you I, – I have, I have the two-hour version. How do I write a screenplay? Well, Victor, if you're interested, you can sign up for my uh, screenwriting course at michaeljammon.com slash course. I will teach you how to write a screenplay. But again, that's not a 10-second answer. Uh, all the advice has been incredibly helpful and informative. All right, Dean, go get it. Los Angeles. Victor is from Greenwood. Well, Victor, if you want to come see me perform in L.A., tickets are now on sale – for my, uh, my performance at the Atwater Playhouse. No, it's not called that anymore. It's in Atwater Village. It's called something else. But go to michaeljammon.com slash live and tickets are now available there. Your Petrina draws. Your podcast and all your free advice applies to my side projects in Hollywood. Thanks so much for your posts. Keep it. You keep it real. Thank you. You keep it real too. Hi. How long do you plan on running your screenwriting course? Thanks in advance. Oh, well, t- uh, Tamim, uh, it is online and it's learn at your own pace. So it's there. You can get it whenever you want. It's online. I don't plan on taking it down. It's, it's, I made it at the beginning of the pandemic when Hollywood was shut down. I had nothing going on for about six months. So it's there. So you, 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 know, you get a lifetime access and you learn at your own pace. I recommend that people watch a half hour a day. And then at the end of like the month, they'll have finished everything and they'll have a habit now. And they'll use that half hour to write. But it's really up, it's up to you. I, I have a retired writer that Dave and I use and like. Okay. So humble. Thank you, bitch face. I don't mean to insult you, but how many hours that is your name? Do you spend writing per day? Uh, it just depends on what's going on. Tomorrow I'll spend a lot. <laughs> Tomorrow I'm meeting up with my partner on a project. So we'll, we'll spend, I mean, a lot. It's my full-time job, dude. I mean, you know, full-time. Are we asking bad questions? You seem rushed. Uh, I try to get to, not necessarily, but I tried to answer, um, Johnny, I'm, I, I'm try, I try to get through everyone's question, but if it's an answer that I've answered like a, a million times or I've already made a video on it, then why am I, I don't want to answer it again. Just go watch the video. So, you know, but if somebody says something new, yeah, let's talk about that. I have a question about how some of those very awful TV. Kidding, just wanted your attention. Okay. I should. Hey, James, love the info you share. Well, my name is not James. Tell that to James. I'm interested in seeking coverage from you. How can we get this started? Righteous Warrior, that's the problem. Uh, I don't offer that right now. And the reason is uh, two reasons. One, I'd have to get you to sign a waiver because I don't want to look at – most working writers won't look at anybody else's work. Uh, And I would charge you a lot of money because you're not paying – you're paying for my time. But also you're paying for 
the 26 years it took me to learn all this. What I do recommend, but like I would highly recommend, and I know I'm just saying this because like, oh, he's trying to sell me something. I would, you get a much better value out of taking my screenwriting course because you will learn far more. You're going to give me a script that I'm going to look at it. I guarantee you. And you're going to say, no, I, I'm different. I, just trust me when I say this. I read a ton of scripts from new writers and even writers who have agents and managers and they think they're ready and they're not ready yet. They're not ready to share. And so when I teach in the course is I teach you all the stuff that you need to do so to get your script in shareable shape so that someone's going to read it and they will be impressed by it. And so I would recommend just taking the course, honestly, because whatever I tell you, whatever you pay me to do, I'm going to read your script and it's going to take me three hours, right? Because I don't, you know, it's not going to take me 10 minutes to draw up notes and then to contact you and then to get on the phone. It's going to be a lot of my time. So I'm going to charge you for that time. For a much better value, just take the damn course. You'll get a much, you'll, you'll get way more out of it because I'll teach you far more in the course than I could possibly cover in an hour on a phone with you. And I'm, I'm just going to be repeating myself. Have you written anything for British TV? No, I have not. I've heard it's not worth writing a TV script based on a popular film due to copyright and legal issues, but I have a terrific idea for a pilot. What are your thoughts? Well, yeah, you don't, you don't write, you can't write something if you don't own the rights to it. Don't, if you don't, don't, don't write the next Hunger Games. You don't own it. So don't do that. If you have an idea for a pilot, if it's an original, is that what you're saying? Write that. I agree. Do that. Write that. What writing software? It's, write, it's a writing sample. Just know that. What writing software? I'm thinking of switching to Final Draft from Celtics or is it Celtics? Final Draft is the industry standard. We all use that because that way we trade scripts and I write, you know, rewrite and they rewrite, whatever. And so that's what we all use. But I'm going to tell you a secret. Upgrading to Final Draft because it's more expensive won't improve your writing, not even a little bit. It's not the it's the, the bells and whistles. It won't make you a better writer. It won't make and when you by the way when you share your script you're going to share you're either going to print out a copy or you're going to share a PDF in which case no one's going to know what you use anyway. So I think there's a better use to your money than upgrading to Final Draft unless this Celtics which I've never used unless it's absolutely horrible but I don't know I've never used it. What's the best way to write comedy with heart, like Ted Lasso or Community? Bill, hater, look like I. The best way is, <clears throat> I, you know, I, I teach this in the course. You know, I, there's no, I don't have an answer, a, a 10 second answer. Uh, this guy's speaking in a language I never heard of. Heard that more productions are coming to New Jersey. Boston, Victor Greenwood. I'll see you in Boston. I hope so, Victor. I'd like to know your feelings about the use of catchphrases. What are you talking about, Willis? I don't use any catchphrases. What are your thoughts on using the film festival to break in as a TV writer? <laughs> uh, well, you use the film festival to, to sell your film. If you become a successful film writer, then yeah, but that's not how I would break in as a TV writer. But uh, if you can make a splash at a giant film festival, doors will open. You'll get management. You'll get an agent. And maybe you'll get an – yeah, it's not a terrible idea, you know? Are you going to be reading different stories in November from those you read in August? Trina Snow, thanks to Cynthia, I will be reading two new stories, Trina. Yeah, so um, I wasn't sure about that, but we're going to read two new stories. There's your answer. Because we're going to use, we're, we're thinking, like, the LA is like a workshop, so I try out new stuff before I take it out on the road. So yeah, two new stories. I hope you can make it. I re-listened to the course. Dave Crossman, he's in the course. I re-listened to the course every few months over the past two years. I always get something out of it. Seriously, consider it if you can. Thank you, Crossman. Yeah, and I have it available. You know, it's meant to be watched, but I also have MP4s or whatever that you download. You can listen to in your car or whatever, or your Sony Walkman. Do people have Sony Walkmans? Um, and so, yeah, so it's a good refresher, you know, just, uh, you know, for, for sure. Repetition, I always feel, is the key to learning something. I've heard that Cohen brothers don't allow their actors to improvise. Is this something advisable or other screenwriters or is it something only a few people can afford? Uh, I, you know, here's the thing. The scripts are written for a reason. Um, it, it's, it's like you're ba- – I, I just watched a movie. I think it was on Netflix and it was highly improv and it was horrible. It was horrible. I couldn't sit through it and it had some big actors in it. It was horrible. Like, it's disrespectful to the writers. You're putting too much pressure on the actors. You're saying, hey, you make it up. Well, I'm the writer. I make it up. I specialize in this and you specialize in that. And let's work together and create something terrific. I've worked on some shows where we allow a certain amount of improv 
you know, okay, here's a section of the script where you can go off book and then come back. You can, but I need to get the script first. Please say the script first, and then I'll allow you to go off a little bit if we have, if time permits. But yeah, James and Nancy. Oops, haha, not James. As a photographer, do you have advice for me to get photography out there? No. <laughs> Sorry. All right, Joseph, how do you be overcome writer's block? Again, not Joseph. How do you deal with writer's mental block? Well, honestly, a lot of people want to know the answer to that. Uh, here's the thing. I, I get paid per episode produced, and on Friday, if we're shooting an episode, I better have that script done by Thursday night. I don't have the luxury. M- m- t- professional TV writers, not just me. We don't have the luxury of like, I'm blocked. Like, what do you think the studio is going to say? Sorry. You're going to be fired. You're out on the street. Sorry, we'll find someone who is not blocked. And so I rely on my training, my training as a writer, everything that I've learned before me. If you are blocked, and I, I believe this, and someone argued with me, some, some dude argued with me, okay, but this is what I feel. Um, if you're blocked, it's because you don't understand story and story structure. You just don't. Uh, you know, and so I would recommend studying it. You know, that's it. I mean, it's not a, I don't take a magic pill. What classes did you take for script writing? What classes did you get the most out of? And, ha- and I have been following you and listening to your advice. Thanks for being a role model for aspiring writers. Well, Ben Grishaw, take mine. MichaelJammon.com slash course. So look at that. Uh, if you don't want to take that and take someone else's, then here's, your, here's, your, uh, here's what you need to do. I would study from someone whose work you admire. You know, uh, Ask them what their writing credits are. Ask them if you could read their samples. The same thing with me. If you want to read my samples, they're there. And if you don't like the way I write, then why would you want to learn from me? And the same thing is if you don't want to write, if you don't like their writing, why would you want to learn from them? Oh, because their course is $150? That's your reasoning? If they don't know how to write, if they don't have credits, and if they don't seem like they're legit, or if, or if you don't like their writing, what you do is, how do I know if I like your Well, you read their script, and if you want to turn the page, you like their writing. That's it. It doesn't matter if it's a drama or comedy or whatever. If you want to turn the page, you like it. If you feel like, eh, I'm not really, don't really care if I turn the page, then you don't like their writing. That's what I would do. If you like me, t- take my course. If you take somebody else's, same thing. I, you know, just do your due diligence, because it's not all the same, for sure. Uh, do you pray before you start writing? No. Do you have any thoughts on Tyler Perry? I do, and I'm keeping him with myself. Yay, says Trina. I am a music enthusiast. Would love to join your live and share some of my work live if you allow. Uh, that's not what this is about. I'm not about music. That's the, you got the wrong channel. What's the best way to get valuable feedback on a script, please, especially when you're exhausted, your family and friends? Uh, I told – this is what I would do. I, you know, I would give – I'm going to tell you this one more time, Tahim. This is what I would do. If you've, exha- if you've exhausted your family and friends, it means they don't want to, they're exhausted. It means they don't want to read it anymore, right? If you, when I give my work out to my family and friends, or mostly my family, um, but also some coworkers, right? You know, colleagues. When I, give, it's, when I give them my piece, at the end of it, they go, great, what else you got? They love it. They want, what else you got? They don't say I'm done. They don't tap out. If your family and friends are exhausted, it's because your writing isn't good yet. So learn the craft of writing. I'm begging you. There's no, there's no easy way around it. There's just no easy way around it. You know? Sorry. No one wants to hear that though. What is your favorite part about writing the beginning, middle, or end? The end, because then I'm done. I get my paycheck for sure. I'm done. I love writers. I'm sort of a ghostwriter. Uh, thanks for the answer regarding the film festival. Just to clarify, I... It'd be a film festival run with a web series, proof of concept, pilot episode, not a film. Yes, the idea is to make a splash. I don't think, I hate the idea. I hate this words proof of concept. You're not making a, a backpack. Yeah, I want to prove to you that it holds uh, my books. I hate that. Proof of concept is terrible. I hate that word. I just, I'm sorry to go off on you. I hate it. But do you want to watch a show that's a proof of content? What does that mean? Write just a freaking sh- – put. A, 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 I don't care if it's 10 minutes or a half hour. Show me something that I want to watch more of. Not that proves the con- – I don't know what that means. If the, the concept is to keep me engaged and riveted and to find out what happens next and to ask for more. That's what – what, what, else, what else could it possibly mean? That I know that, that here's the concept that we can put actors on a soundstage and shoot this. Like what's the concept? So I wouldn't, I can't, I'm yelling at you, Danny, but you asked my opinion and I don't mean to yell. You're looking at it like a business. 
just create something amazing that people want to watch. Just create something amazing. Give to your audience. Proof of concept, you're basically saying, give me. Give me your money. And I'm saying, look at it the other way around. Give them a great story. All right. My, I don't mean to yell. I'm trying to help. My favorite genre is Western. So is it bad idea to sticking to a single genre and I have a feature that is 152 pages? Would it be better to turn it into a miniseries? 152 pages is too long. No one wants to read it. The first thing I do when I get a script is I, ca- I looked at the end pages. How long is this thing going to be? If I see 152, oh, too long. So the second thing is I have a feature. Would it be better to turn it into a miniseries? I don't know. It's a writing sample. It's a writing, look at it as a writing sample. That's your, it's not, you're not trying to sell it. It's a writing sample. All of these questions, welcome to my feed, but I feel like you haven't listened to my podcast. You haven't watched a lot of my material. I talk about this over and over again. So get familiar with my page here. Start watching my videos because I've, I've answered a lot of these questions. If you're in the Boston area, come see me uh, at my, uh, in Amesbury. My show is November 12th and 13th. Uh, tickets are on sale now. Michaeljammon.com slash live. Let's answer a couple more and then let's take a break for lunch. Advice on how to join writers groups for advanced professional screenwriters. Well, Dr. Von Williams, um, I mean, obviously there are Facebook groups for screenwriting. Um, like there are ones with like 50,000, 100,000. Like there's a lot of, the problem with those groups, obviously there's a lot of nastiness in those groups. There's a lot of trolling. There's a lot of peacocking. Um, yeah, uh, you know, you can suss it out. You're going to have to find the right ones. Part of one of the advantages of my screenwriting course is that I have a private Facebook group that people are always trying to join. And no, you have to be in the class to take it. I'm always saying no to people. Uh, So it's not about me building up the numbers of the course. It's about maintaining a core group of highly motivated uh, people. And so the people in my course, they network. They uh, do table reads among themselves. I don't even orchestrate it. They have taken the, the lead on it and they've all been through my course. They all speak the same language. They know how I talk, how I approach story and they do it the same. So what I'm finding in that group is a high level, uh, highly motivated, highly educated people. So that's, if you're interested, you, that's, one of the, that's one of the perks. What's your favorite fiction book? Probably Owen Meany. I love that. Any advice on how to approach an established writer that you want to learn from? Old man crummy. Uh, No, I don't have any advice on that. What do you feel are some of the traits of the best writers? Uh, um, What are some of the traits? You you know, you have to observe. You have to to observe and you have to be willing to get to the truth of the matter. I don't know if there's any traits. Do you think the WWE writers should get credit for their work? Joel, I actually did a talk to the WWE writers. Um... I did a talk there. I was hired by uh, Christine Lebrano, who runs their, I, I don't know, their scripted or something. I gave a talk to them maybe a year ago. Uh, should I? Do I think they should get credit for their work? I didn't know they weren't, which makes it sound like they are not in the Writers Guild. Um, I, I would, if I were them, I'd try to organize and get covered by the Writers Guild, and then they would get credit. But I, you know, I don't really know what they do. You know, I don't. You know, I don't know. Shonda Rhimes said the same thing on Instagram. She doesn't believe in writer's block. She said you sit down and write. Shonda Rhimes, yeah. I didn't know she said that. But it, it's, it's what we all, you know, it's what we all say. And I saw, Trina, I saw like a thing. Someone posted a, I think that Aaron Sorkin said. Now, I'm no Aaron Sorkin, but he was talking about uh, first drafts and second drafts. And I say the same thing that he says. And it's not that me and Aaron Sorkin know so much. It's, it's, what we all, it's what we all do. We all say, all the professional writers, we all say the same thing because we all do it. And so, um, yeah, it's not a secret really, but yeah. And Shonda Rhimes, I'm sure, like if I walked into Shonda Rhimes' writer's room, I, I'd fit right in after five minutes. I'd jump right in because we all speak the same way. Um, I was blocked a bit. Oops, I skipped it. Filled out the board this morning. Now I'm not blocked. Jamming methodology for the win. Yeah, Dave Crossman's my class. And so, yeah, you just, I teach you how to answer what kind of questions you should ask yourself. And, uh, and that propels you forward. Now, sometimes you, it's not, that's not to say I'm not blocked. It's not like, for me, a block looks like, okay, that's an idea, but can I think of a better idea? That's what writer's block looks like. And eventually I go, no, let's just do the bad idea. But no, I'm only, I'm only joking. But what show did you work on that you wish didn't get canceled or ended? Uh, well, you know, I had a lot of fun on King of the Hill. I've, been, I've never been on a show that got canceled while I was there. 
Yeah. So I've been lucky. I usually jump ship before it gets canceled. Smart. The rats are jumping ship. Why don't they have more improv sitcoms? That would be great. I think to me it sounds horrible. I would not want to watch sit through that. I think I think uh, as a writer, I think there's a lot of value in in not improv, in, in writing, in spending time to write something. Go figure. What else would you expect a writer to say? Do showrunners handle two or three part episodes different than a standalone episode? Well, yeah, well, yeah, of course, because you have to carry a storyline all the way through. But that you know, sure. A couple more questions and it's time for lunch. Do you feel that writers' internal glory come while writing they best script or seeing the movie play out? I don't know what that means, my friend. I'm sorry. Quentin Tarantino says that he had taken script writing class. He wouldn't have been able to make or write that script that he did. What are your thoughts on that, please? Thanks. Well, you know, Quentin Tarantino is extremely talented. Uh, I love his his writing. Um, He's famously not pro writer he's not in the writer's guild he, he dropped out of the writer's guild he thinks the way he thinks differently um if you think you are of his talent which is here you know if you think you're of his talent which is here then do what he says if you think that you're slightly less below him or if you think you might be my talent level or below me you're going to want to take a class but if you think god gr- graced you with his talent then do what he says I always find it odd when people, but but, Trent, but Quentin Tarantino, but Martin Scorsese, are you any of those people? When you pull up at, uh, at the restaurant, do they say, write this way, Mr. Tarantino? Because if you're not, if they don't say that to you, don't act like you're him. Uh, what are the main differences between screenwriting a cartoon and a film show? Not much. A story is story. How does it work to be a member of the Writers Could Live America? Well, you... Um, you get initiated because you sell a certain amount of uh, projects to, to Writers Guild shows. And then the Writers Guild says, okay, you are now eligible to join. You've sold X amount of work. You can join. And then once you're in, uh, they, uh, you pay a small fee, a small percentage of your earnings. And in exchange, you get health care, health coverage, and you get a pension plan as well as, you know, the bargaining power of being in the Writers Guild. So I'm a big fan of the Writers Guild. Um, I really am. I, you know, Quentin Tarantino is not a fan of the Writers Guild. But um, uh, I guess I just am. Because I got what I got because people before me were willing to strike. And the people after me got what they got because I, because I struck. So I, I, I don't think you can do this industry on your own. I think that's crazy. Uh, because someone will always undercut you. And someone will help sell you, will sell you, sell you out in a second. So I'm pro union for the Writers Guild for sure. Very pro, very pro. I, I'm grateful for the guild. That's all I can say about that. He feels differently. Uh, once the worst thing you wrote that made it to TV or cable, I will pass on that one. See you in Boston, Alyssa. Did you get your tickets? I hope to see you, Alyssa Batello. I will see you in Boston. I will see you there. Any advice? Bring a friend if you have a friend. If you don't, maybe you'll make a friend. Any advice on how to establish? Connections to possibly become a writer for a streaming service. Bill Hader lookalike. Are you on my watch list? Are you watching my podcast? Are you listening to my podcast? Are you subscribed to my YouTube channel? It's all there, dude. Buckle up. Just dedicate a month or so to listening here on Instagram to start watching my videos because I talk about this over and over. So when you say any advice, I give you all of my advice. I run out of things to say because I, have, I say so much. So if you want to get on my watch list, I'll, I'll email to you for free at michaeljammon.com slash watch list. Who's next? What is a range of how much you could sell a script for? 10,000 to a million? Um, a million like was the high point. I, like was, you know... They don't, I don't think they're buying scripts for a million dollars anymore. Uh, you know, if they are, I'm not hearing about it. Um, but I don't work in features either. I work in TV. So maybe you got to ask a feature guy that. I appreciate the advice. You didn't yell. Let me rephrase. Create an incredible web series pilot with the long-term goal of becoming a 60-minute drama like an indie film. I would, if you want to make a web series, I would recommend that. Um, put it up on YouTube. Maybe like a 10-minute web series. And every, you know, each episode's 10 minutes or something. And if you could build a track, big trash and uh, build a giant audience, if people love it, then Hollywood will come to you, Danny. Hollywood will come to you. But if it ain't great, if it ain't great, if, this, if it's not written well, what's the point? No one's going to, because you're going to say, well, yeah, but it looks like a TV show. Yeah, but who cares? Who cares what it looks like? Is it, is, it, is it good to watch? 
You know, no one's going to be impressed by your lighting, your camera moves. No one's impressed by the car- by the camera swooping down or the crane. But no one's no one's impressed by the special effects. They're going to be impressed by the writing. That's it. Lola Lola joined. Hello, hello, sweetie. The professional writer I use for coverage is Linda Mathias. IMDb and Google her. Tweet her. Okay. Lola, hello. But some of the best students don't exactly reflect the teacher. I don't know what that means. You are writing, you are cryptic. Do you teach screenwriting for films or TV? Um, Am I mindful? Uh, The class that I teach is applicable to both. I've written both. I've written hour long. I've written, you know, comma, comedy, drama, features. I've done all that. So what I teach is applicable to all that. It's story is story. There's no difference between writing a movie and a half hour TV show. It's the same three, three act structure. It's the same thing. Uh, comedy is no different than a drama. So if you'd like to learn that, and I, and on the course, I use plenty of dramas, movies as, um, as case studies to, I show you, see, look what they did in this movie. See, it's exactly what I do when I'm writing a half hour TV show. There's no difference. It's just that the act one, instead of being, you know, nine minutes long is a half hour. It's no different. There's just no difference to it. Um, so you, in a movie, you have a little more time to let things develop, but structurally it's the same thing. So if you're interested, michaeljammon.com slash course. If not, just keep following me here. It's all good. How long will your course be available, Petrina? I'm still saving enough so I purchase it. Uh, we have no plans of, of removing it. So it's online. You know, you can learn. Get it when you can. You know, get it when, you, when, when, you're, when you're ready. That's all. It, it's, it'll be there. We're, we're waiting for you. Not that you're even close, but what does retirement look like? Oh, it can't, it can't be close enough. For a writer, what does it look like? It could look like teaching. It could look like writing novels. You know, well, I don't know. What else, what does it look like? Florida? I don't know. Not for me. I won't go Florida. Yeah, you, I don't, I'm not a Florida guy. How? So how do really bad shows get to TV? Good question. Good question. That's a, that's a whole different discussion. What major points do you try to hit when you're writing a scene? Goal, action, conflict, change. Uh, well, I... I, uh, I the, you need, I mean... Uh, I don't know where to begin, Dr. Vaughn. You need conflict in every scene. Every scene must have conflict or else there's no point in the scene. Change, I don't really know what that means. Characters don't have to change. They, I mean, they have to be a little bit different at the end than they were in the beginning of the, of the piece. Uh, but yeah, but in every action, I don't know what action is, but there should always be a goal. Every character in the scene has to have a goal or else why are they there? Um, but that's I don't I don't approach it the way you're talking about. But uh, I don't know. You you can sign up for my free lesson if you want. MichaelJammon.com slash free if you want to get a sense of how I teach. Any advice for networking with musicians? Sorry, I don't. I have no advice for you. Do you have a lot of fun working on Just Shoot Me? Oh, did I? Oh, yeah, it was a blast. That was my first job in TV. LOL, you won't make the reconstruction. The best writer, the best, I don't even know what that means. The best writer teaches can read first graders horribly writing. Yeah, I don't know what you're trying to do. I don't know what you're trying to do. Have a, hope you have a great day. Thank you. We are his body. Christ don't like you. All right. Read that clear. So this guy is, hold on. Just one second. Okay. So I blocked that guy because you know why? He was a little too crazy. He's crazy. He knows he's crazy too, which is why he has these eyes hollowed out. He's not trying to keep it a secret. Tell your wife I love real monsters. I will let her know for sure. She's outside. This guy's nuts. That olive branch is weak. What are you doing, dude? This guy's nuts, man. He's off his meds. How many writing partners have you had in your career? Just one. We've been working together forever. Uh, Can you come to Florida? At some point, I'm sure I'll come to Florida when I tour. If you want to DM me your email address, what's your name? King, uh, DM me your email address and say what city you want me to visit. Then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll let you know. Union, laborer, got it. See, do you describe how to make a screenplay about a book I'm writing? Do you describe how to make a screenplay about a book I'm writing? Well, in the course, I teach I teach you how to take a, a, an idea and turn it into a, a, a screenplay. This guy's nuts. Look how crazy this guy is. Is me so? He's nuts. But I blocked him. Do you consider screenwriting as literature? Why or why not? Um, it's not up to me well, whether I describe. I, I wouldn't say it's literature, but I'm not sure. It's storytelling. I would call it that. I'm not sure if I would call it literature. But does it matter? I mean, it's just semantics. I don't know. 
I was told that my film was episodic. What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. Ask the, ask the person who told it to you. I don't know. Uh, thank you so much for answering. You're welcome. This guy's nuts. I already blocked him. That guy is crazy. I love Just Shoot Me. Yeah, it was a good show. I like that. It was fun. You look familiar. Have you been to Seattle? No, I haven't, but I'd like to. Is it normal for the sweet oregano to start budding white flowers? I don't know, Lola. I don't know. I don't know. You're going to have to Google that. It might go bad. You might want to pick the flowers. I don't know. You're going to have to Google it. All right. So that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go have some lunch. If you want to come see me in Boston, I hope you'll come see me. And I'm also going to be in L.A. as well in December. The Boston show is November 12th and 13th at the Actors Studio in Amesbury, which is about 45 minutes north of Boston. Tickets are on sale now. Go to michaeljammon.com slash live for tickets. Hey, Big Mike. And if you want to see me in L.A., I will be performing in December uh, in Atwater Village. And that is also uh, for sale now. Tickets for sale, michaeljammon.com slash live. New York City, Seb Mad City. Uh, at some point, I will be at, at New York City. So just DM me. Um, DM me. <laughs> so just DM me your uh, your email address and say New York City. So when I get to New York City, um, I will let you know. Okay, everyone. Thank you so much for following. And until the next live, be safe. Okay. Uh-oh. How do I turn this thing off? <laughs>